Welcome. Halloween is over and we're now into the month of November, so it must be time to do a Solar Cycle 25 update based on the month of October. Overall, October was a very quiet month, somewhat surprisingly. We had just 23 new sunspot regions numbered by NOAA in the month. The sunspot number varied from 130 to 170. The average sunspot number was 99, and that's down 27% from September. We had 193 sea flares, which is 22% down from September. Amazingly, we had only seven M flares. That's down nearly 80% from the previous month. And we had 158 CMEs, which was down 13% from September. So overall, a pretty quiet month. So here's the sunspot numbers that we were working with. The daily sunspot numbers are marked in yellow, and you can see we have a low point very recently. That was the low point in the month of October. The blue line is the monthly average, and as I said, that's 99 for this month. And the most important thing here is the smooth sunspot number, which is the solid red number. And you'll notice that actually went up a little bit. And that's because the smooth sunspot number is the average of 13 consecutive months. And 99 was much higher than the sunspot number from 14 months ago. So that increased the overall smooth sunspot number. The red line on the previous plot was not very clear. So I've plotted the smooth sunspot number in a different way here, just showing that, not all the other data. And you can see that our most recent point is April of 2023. That's because the smooth sunspot number is an average of 13 consecutive months. And its value is 122. That's 6% higher than the solar cycle 24 number. Each month we take a look at how solar cycle 25 is progressing. And this is that plot. The top plot here is the sunspot number. And as I say, you can see it's down but it's still above where the prediction for the cycle was by quite a significant margin, although now it's within the margin of error. The F10.7 radio flux is still much higher than the, the model, uh, but still slightly down from last month. Note both of these quantities have exceeded solar cycle 24 already. So here are the models predicting what the solar cycle is going to do, updated from last month. The first one is the standard curves method and peaks at about 175 in May of 2024. The second plot here is the so-called combined method, and that comes up with a maximum of 140 sometime in October 2024 or after, because this only goes one year in advance. The third one is the McNish Lincoln method, which is favored by some. And you can see that's continuing to go up all but slowly for the next few months. And that predicts a maximum of about 140 in October of 2024. So those last two models are beginning to come together quite nicely. That doesn't mean they're right, but it's uh, at least reassuring. An important quantity to understand about the sun is the total solar radiance. That's the motive of energy coming from the sun reaching the earth. It has risen from 1361.4 watts per meter squared to 1363.0 watts per meter squared over the last four years. That's a 0.11% increase, which is about the range that you get for a solar cycle normally. You will notice that already it is much higher on average than solar cycle 24. So let's take a look at a movie of the sunspots. This is from the Solar Dynamics Observatory HMI instrument. It's 31 days long, basically through the month. One second equals about 12 hours. The thing to look for is newly emerging sunspots, decaying sunspot regions, which I think you'll see somewhat more of it during this month than before, and also spot motions within a group, which usually indicates some level of flaring activity.
Speaking of flares, we are showing here the number of C flares. Orange is solar cycle 25, blue is solar cycle 24, and solar cycle 25 is outperforming solar cycle 24 so far by 91%. That's quite a large margin. But the slope has dropped a little bit since last month because of this relatively quiet period that we've just had. So let's take a look at M flares. Uh, as I said, there was only seven M flares in the last month. And you can see that the rate of M flares has dropped off quite significantly. Very similar rate to what we had in solar cycle 24 at the same time. But it's still outpacing solar cycle 24 by 110%. Well, let's take a look at the flare movie for this month. This is in the 94 Angstrom channel, which is about 6 million degrees. Again, one second is about 12 hours. Look for sudden brightenings, those are impulsive flares, and then long-lasting brightenings, those are long-duration events, usually associated with CMEs. Here's a comparison between solar cycle 24 and solar cycle 25 for the last uh, four years. And you can see that solar cycle 25 is outperforming solar cycle 24 by about 30%, which is very similar to what it was doing last month. So we'll take a look at a chronal mass ejection movie with using the SOHO LASCO C2 plus the Solar Dynamics Observatory HMI continuum, i.e. the sunspots. I do analyses that some people don't do, and this is one of them. This is, I've been tracking the average latitude of sunspots in both the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. The Northern Hemisphere is in orange, the Southern Hemisphere is in blue, and you can see they're both edging towards the equator. And from this, we can actually derive a time when the sunspots will reach the equator, which will signal the beginning of solar minimum, in the Northern Hemisphere, that would be about 123 months after minimum, which would put it in March of 2030. In the Southern Hemisphere, I would put it as 115 months after solar minimum, which would be the August of 2029. We had a very strong coronal hole come across the sun towards the end of the month. And so I looked back to the previous month, the previous rotation at the same time, and you can see how much that coronal hole has grown. The second appearance of the coronal hole produced a short geomagnetic storm, not a very strong one. It was only a G1 level storm, but nonetheless, it's still having an effect on the Earth. Be interesting to see what it will be like when it comes back next month. So what conclusions can we draw from all of this? Well, solar cycle is continuing to build up. The maximum will be sometime in 2024 or possibly even 2025 with maximum anywhere between 130 and 180. The solar minimum between solar cycle 25 and solar cycle 26 will be either late 2029 or early 2030, according to my calculations. So thank you for watching. Don't forget that I have a YouTube channel that does daily updates of what's going on in the sun, and you should be welcome to come over and listen to that. 
and also until next time stay safe and goodbye